term by the largest power of x in the denominator. You should probably write that down. Now, why not the numerator? Well, think about it. If your, if your exponents don't exactly match up and you start dividing by the largest power in the numerator, you could have a lot of undefined things. Does that make sense? For instance, if you had this uh, x to the fourth over x cubed, and you divide it by x to the fourth, you'd have other stuff here. But if you divide it by x to the fourth, that's undefined. That's 1 over x. That's a bad thing. So it's always by the largest power in the denominator. That way, you won't be undefined. You might be going to infinity, but you won't be undefined. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Another way uh, people like to say this, uh, I'm not going to write it down. It's kind of it's a, it's a shortcut. Uh, but if your if your powers are equal to each other, you're going to the coefficient over the coefficient. That's what we have here. But you can see that that's going to work, right? X squared over x squared, x cubed over x, no problem. If your power is larger on the numerator than the denominator, well, you divide by this power, this is still going to have an x up there somewhere, right? That's infinity, either positive or negative infinity. If this one is larger than, I'm sorry, smaller than this one, if this one's larger, well, then you're going to be going to zero. Because you divide by this one, no x is here, x here, you're going to zero. That's one way you can look at that as well. So if the top still has an x, you're going to infinity? Of course. Let's try a couple more. You're going you're gonna to start seeing this very easily. It's not going to be something super duper hard. What's going to be super duper hard is when we combine this with some other ideas in a little while. Actually, not even super duper hard then. Just super hard. Not even the duper. Don't worry about the duper. <laughs> Come on, that was fun. That was funny. Among others. <laughs> If you were listening to what I was talking about, you could probably tell me where this limit is going right off the bat. Zero. Not one third. Zero. If the powers matched up, it would. Where's the power the biggest? That means what we're going to be doing here to show your work, you're going to be dividing everything not by x squared, mm -mm, but by x to the third power. x to the third power. You follow me on that? So this would look just like this. You'd have 5x squared over x to the third, minus 4x over x to the third. All over, everything gets divided, everything. 15x to the third over x to the third, minus 3 over x to the third. <coughs> if we do just a little of simplification, well, look what happens. Do you see how this power it's still going to be 5 over x. And this is going to be 4 over x squared. You see the x squared? This is going to be 15, sure, but this is going to be 3 over x to the third. We had that, that, the principles of beginning class for a reason. It said any constant over any power of x as x approaches any infinity is going where, folks? Where? Zero. 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 So where's this going? Zero. Zero. Where's this going? Zero. Where's this going? Oh, come on. Come on. Everyone got to play along. Where's this going? Zero. Zero. Fifteen. Zero. So this, after you stop writing the limit, would be zero minus zero over fifteen minus zero. That's where these things are going. It's a constant over x as x approaches infinity. Negative infinity, but still an infinity. Zero, 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 zero. How much is that going to be? Zero. That's zero. That says a horizontal asymptote. That's what this is, by the way, a horizontal asymptote. 
as you're going to the left. Are you following me on that? Now, if you did this, if you reciprocated this, and you divide everything by x squared, do you see how you still have an x on the numerator? That would be saying you're going to positive or negative infinity, depending on what, uh, what x is approaching. <clears throat> Let's do one more, and then next time we'll start building on this concept. Two more, two more. We get, we get three minutes now. Again, some of you who kind of understand this, this concept right now should probably be able to tell me where this is going to approach, or at least have a guess what it's going to approach. Negative infinity. Okay. Positive infinity. Okay. Ooh, battle royale. That's out. Well, you might want to do the work to make sure, but do you see it's not going to go to a constant? Do you see it's not going to go to zero? What are we going to divide by? x cubed, x squared, or x? The largest power in the denominator. So show your work. Don't get lazy on that. Don't take a guess, because some of you are guessing right now. Don't take a guess. Show your work. Over x. Over x. Over x. All over... That. Divide everything by the largest power in the denominator, not the numerator. That give you undefined spots. Do you see that? If I divide it by x cubed, I get a whole bunch of undefined stuff. Can't have that. Can't do that. Are you alright with that one so far? Simplify them. You're going to get 7x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x, all over 9 over x minus 2. <coughs> you follow me on that? Now let's kind of think carefully about what happens here. What happens? Where's that go? That goes to positive infinity. Does this stuff matter? No. That goes to positive infinity. Agreed? It's x squared. This is 0, but that is a negative 2. Where's that going? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. In fact, if you really wanted me to show it to you this way, I could. Couldn't you factor out a negative and get 2 minus 9 over x? Move the negative up top. Negative infinity. Bam. Got it. Do you see it? You understand that went to positive infinity? A little unorthodox here, but you see this goes to zero. Negative two doesn't change. Positive divided by negative is a infinity divided by two, still infinity. Okay. Now mathematically, oh, oh not that. <laughs> Doesn't do that. <laughs> that yeah. Mathematically, the way that you could show this is the way I showed you. If you factor out the negative, it's negative two minus nine over x, right? If you take that negative and move to the top of your fraction, which is legal to do, it goes there. That becomes two minus nine over x. That says this goes to infinity times a negative. That's negative infinity. But divided by a positive now, that's negative infinity. That's what that means as well. Can we show it the way the unorthodox way? Yeah. By the way, did anything but the highest powers of x have anything to do with our problem here? This one and that one was really what, what caused this to be the way it was. That. Uh, one last thing I'll leave you with, just this idea.
because I want you to look at some of your homework tonight, but I don't want you to be completely afraid of it. Just a little afraid. That looks pretty nasty, but tell me something that I can do with exponents. What can you do? Not yet. I can move them outside. Is a root a type of exponent? Then look. You can take a cube root of the limit. Ah, now ignore the cube root for a second, just for a second though. Can you do this limit? Yeah. Explain to me how you would do this limit. What would you divide by here? X, which one? X squared. X squared. Hey, where's this limit going to go from the in, on the inside? Two Do you see the two thirds? Uh, two thirds. And then take a cube root of that. So our answer here, after you show the work, would be a cube root of two thirds. The work you show is, is this. You show a cube root 2x squared over x squared minus 3 over x squared all over <coughs> that. That's what you show, but that's the answer you get. How many people understood today? Feel okay with it? Right side people, are you guys over this so far? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're talking about how to do limits as x approaches infinity. Now, the last example I gave you, I think I gave you that one, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I said that when you have a cube root, it is a power. That means you can pull it outside of our limit and say, well, let's take the cube root of our limit itself. Now, when you do that, that's kind of nice, right? Because we know how to take these limits. <coughs> what we would normally do is divide everything by the largest power in the denominator. That's x squared. You would get 2. That's going to be 0. 3. That's going to be 0. You're going to get 2 thirds. You, you follow don't forget about the cube root, but your answer is two-thirds with a cube root around it. I think that's what I gave you last time. Did, were you okay with that one? Yeah. Now, I, I showed you that one again because I want you to consider the problem that's just below it. Can I do the same thing here? For instance, can I pull out the square root around the whole limit? No. No, because that square root's not around this whole function. It's just on the numerator. So, oh my gosh, well, what do we do? What do we do? Well, let's, let's try to stick with the, the normal operation of this. When we're taking x to infinity, we can't just go, well, that's infinity squared. OK, that's still infinity. Plus 2 to infinity. Square root's infinity over infinity. Uh, 1. We can't do that. But what we did say was, maybe we divide by the largest power of x in the denominator. denominator. So we're going to look down there. What's the largest power of x in the denominator? One. x to the first power. So let's divide the numerator and the denominator by x. Are you okay with that so far? Well, now here's the issue, and some of you might see this issue already. Can I just take this x inside that square root? I can't unless I have a square root. Remember, you can only combine, combine things if you have the same exact type of root. Follow? Because it's, it's an exponent. You can only put things together if you have the same type of exponent. Well, well that's a problem. Does anyone know how to change x?